everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to do some space dyeing using some Paradise Fiber Acid Dyes. I reviewed these dyes last fall, and since then it really does feel like these colors spread a little bit further than some other acid dyes I have, so I'm really curious to see how they perform in a situation where we might have semi-crowded pots and just to see how much spread of the colors we get with the space dyeing technique. Before I talk more about the color plan, although you did just have a hint, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my lab partner today, Don Jans. Don, thank you so much for being my lab partner again and a huge happy birthday. Uh, your birthday just happened and so I really hope that you had a wonderful, colorful, yarn-filled celebration. And yeah, thank you so much for being my lab partner. The three colors that I have pulled today are blue, yellow, and green. Now, if you have watched my other videos, you will know that the Paradise Fibers Green is much more of a teal color. It is not as green as this. And my plan is to uh, create more of a green using that yellow color. So that way we will have a blue, a teal, and a green that we combine together. Now, I still plan to do some green mixing using the various yellows and blues and the teal that we have in this collection, uh, but I have not yet filmed that, but there is a chance that video has already come out. Uh, if not, uh, please make sure you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel so you never miss a new video. I put on my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves and weighed out two grams of each of these three acid dye colors. And then I dissolved that dye with some hot tap water in an unspecified volume. I am not sure if I will add all of the dye that I am mixing right now to our, our project today, but this should give me enough dye so we have uh, some ability to play and potentially add more dye later on if we find that necessary. Depending on how things go with the space dyeing, I may add some straight yellow on, but I'm gonna take approximately half of the yellow color and let's take a tiny bit of some blue. That was not very much blue. And let's see where we are color-wise. Let me get something to stir. So it looks like right here now we've got a grassy green. Let's just add a pinch of the actual green. Let's see where it brings us. This shows like you don't need very much blue to start turning it green. That gives us a very nice like true grass green there. But yeah, we needed a lot more yellow. So my plan, I think, is to add all of this green. And I think I'm gonna take half of each of those two other colors. Just to start with. Okay, so we've got our green. And we're gonna take approximately, maybe a little more than half of the color Paradise Fibers Coles Green which is a stunning color, very pigmented. Yeah, maybe we'll add a little bit less back. Okay, so we're gonna start with these three colors. Let me show you the palette here. But yeah, you can see how pigmented these colors are. So this is bringing us, and the colors will mix and blend more, which is why, depending on how much they spread, I might decide to add the yellow. But we are starting with a very lovely palette here. In my dedicated dye pot, it's a stainless steel 12 quart pot, I have eight cups of water, and I'm gonna add three tablespoons of white vinegar so we have enough acid, and I'm now gonna come and add our yarn. Today, we are gonna dye 200 grams of Knit Picks Swish DK yarn, and this yarn is 100% uh, superwash merino. And I am arranging it, sort of twisted the two skeins together a little bit, but I'm arranging it here in the pot. Now, 
Uh, do I want to add more water? I mean, we have enough water in here that things are floating. But actually, I'm gonna add another four cups of water with one tablespoon of white vinegar. So now we are at 12 cups of water with four tablespoons of white vinegar. And there's really enough space in here that the yarn is floating. So when we apply the dye, probably like here, here, and here, it should be able to spread and move throughout the pot. But now I am going to heat things up. Uh, and once it gets hot, then we will add our dye. This is a technique that we absolutely could do in a catering steam pan. You can do space dyeing there and watch the colors spread out. But the thing I enjoy about having a pot like this is that uh, it gives a little bit more surprise. Since there is more liquid, there's more chance for those colors to blend together. And so it's also then a little harder to predict what will happen, which is a lot of fun. We are nice and hot, and let's start adding these colors. I think I want to focus them each like at one section. So here is that green that we mixed. I'm gonna add that there. And then over here, I've got the blue. And then finally, I mean, this is the actual green, but that isn't really green. And so now we're going to see what happens. I had no idea how much we would be able to see the colors visibly spread. So I filmed a 10 minute time lapse. And I, although I checked in a few times, uh, I'm not sure how long like we saw the color spread versus once they stopped. Uh, but I did notice that that green we added seemed to be overtaken by the actual Paradise Fibers green, that teal color, pretty quickly. Uh, it's always so fun to watch the colors spread and see where they peek out. And it's also extremely hard to not touch the yarn, <laughs> to not touch it, and to poke the white patches in. I really wanted to see with this first round of dyeing what the colors would do because we can always add more color later. Uh, I'm excited to see what we have here, but there's no reason why we can't add more color. You do not have to stop after the first stage if you want to adjust the color a bit. The 10 minutes are up and I'm curious. It looks like all that blue. Okay, I, I am curious and it does look like all of the color has struck at this point, but it did spread, uh, which is what I've observed with this color before. So I am now actually going to lift this because I am curious. Oh wow, we got really, really nice coverage of the yarn. I do think I want to dye another round, but before we do that, I am going to remove this yarn just briefly. Uh, so that way we can take a look at it from just this first round of color and then decide what colors we may want to layer on top. But oof, I mean, some colors did strike quickly, but with this amount of acid and some other dyes, I'm not sure how far they might have spread. Uh, so, yeah, I, and I'm very impressed with the pigmentation. Let's take a look at where the yarn stands right now. And this is really, really pretty with the blues and the deeper teals. And we do have some greens in here as well. Ooh, some places it's like really saturated, some places less so. Um, but you can see that, you know, doing this kind of more free flowing technique, we do have very differences between the two skeins. Like this one has some more green on it, um, more than the other one. But I did want to show the yarn now before we dye it again. And we can look at this and sort of decide how we may want to shift things. The heat is still on low in our pot. 
And I'm going to take this blue, that is the rest that I've rinsed from that cup. Uh, and I'm gonna come in, because it's not very much, with a little bit more of the blue that we originally mixed. And coming with our yarn, I'm not so much, eh, I guess I am kind of dip dyeing, um, but I am just sort of popping the yarn in there right now to just add some more blue onto it. Uh, and then I'm gonna let that sit there while I mix a little bit more green, I think, to add on. Unfortunately, I did put this in to the pot in a way that means that the zip ties are hidden, but I think that it'll be fine. <laughs> okay. I don't think we need like a ton of color, but I'm gonna add some yellow. I am gonna add more liquid, so that way we will be able to add it to a larger area. Now, right now, that is still rather yellow. So let's add some of the green to it, and it's getting greener. We're gonna run out of space. I don't mind if it's a little bit of a yellow green, but I do think, I think I wanna take like a spoonful of blue and I really enjoy like mixing colors by feel and things like that. And so that gives us now we're sort of at a green that is not as concentrated because there's a little bit more water, but we're at a similar green to that one that we had originally mixed. This is really lovely. Uh, it has not been, it has not been very long at all, just long enough. Uh, for, oh goody, I picked this up in a sensible bowl way. Uh, just long enough for me to go and mix those colors. Uh, but what this did was remove not all, but most of the white. And now, this time I'm sort of, I've arranged it without as much twist, but in a way where I can sort of intentionally add this green but I'm still planning on letting it spread a bit randomly but I'm gonna focus sort of in that area right there and then in this area over here to bring more of that color in and then I'm gonna rinse out uh, this cup right here and just add that amount of liquid in and so the greens may still spread a bit, but it does seem, and this is the case with a lot of yellows, is that there was a lot less pigment in that green. So that's why that's one that I wanted to add again. But now I, with the heat on low, am going to wait 20 minutes and we'll come back and check on the yarn. It has been 20 minutes and I just turned off the heat. We are super, super steamy. And oof, this is a beautiful, like blue and green and teal yarn. Very, very blue colors overall. It is lovely. And the color coverage we have is fantastic. Uh, I am going to go ahead and set this yarn aside to cool completely so we can wash it. This yarn is a confection of green and, and blue. Let's wash this beautiful green and blue yarn. I love the dimension and how, how many tones we have in here. It's actually looking a little bit overexposed on camera. There's a lovely saturation here. And, well, for now, I'm not seeing any color bleeding, which is great. I do find that these Paradise Fiber Sides are extremely pigmented. Uh, we, goodness, oh, well, I guess we had measured out six grams of dye total and used maybe half of that. So that is a reasonable amount of dye to have for this amount of pigmentation. Uh, so I'm not saying that they're necessarily more pigmented, but 
I'm very happy with what we have created here. Uh, and I'm excited to play with the guys more in the future. But let's see how we're doing bleeding wise. Maybe a hint of some green. Not bad given the saturation. But I will go ahead and rinse this a few more times to rinse out the soap. And if the bleeding does not resolve in one to two rinses, then I will check back in. And we'll talk about ways to mitigate that. Well, and here we have it. The water is looking nice and clear. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Well, this is a colorful spot to the new year. I am really happy with how the Paradise Fibers Acid Dye spread and we got really good coverage even after that first round. I did end up adding more color, but I am really happy that I did because I was able to increase the coverage still with a fairly random technique. And I'm sure I said this earlier while I was dying, but it is okay when you're doing something and to decide to add more color and to move things around. There are a lot of times when I'm like, I'm not gonna touch things because I wanna see what happens. And, but it's okay to touch things to move it around. It's okay to peek and see what's happened. So some things I might do because it's fun for a video and for a reaction might be different from what you want to do in practice because ultimately you should keep adding color until you're satisfied with the results. Just remember that you can always add more but you can't really take it away. We have a lot of really beautiful greens in here and I am really, really pleased with how it turned out. I am still curious how saturated these Paradise Fibers Acid Dyes are compared to, say, Dharma and Jacquard, but uh, yeah, I think that it just, they worked great and they do feel very pigmented. At the time I'm recording this, I have not yet filmed my exploration into green on fiber with Paradise Acid with with Paradise Fibers Acid Dyes. That will likely either be coming soon or has already been published, uh, but it is something that I intend to film and I'm excited to try. So if you don't want to miss more of me playing with this acid dye line or any kind of applying color to yarn, make sure that you are subscribed and turn on notifications because you engaging with these videos and the channel is the biggest way that you can help support the content here. There are some differences between the two skeins, which I did not highlight before twisting them up. But with this kind of technique, especially when you have things not laid out straight in a pan, there will be variation from skein to skein just based on how they're positioned and where you pour the dye on. But they would work together really, really well. It's just if you were going to use both in one project, I would recommend that you alternate skeins every couple of rounds to blend them together so that way some of the bigger differences aren't like super obvious when you shift from one skein to the next. Of course, that is personal preference, and for me, having those little differences is one of the biggest perks of hand-dyed yarn, so lean into it. Dawn, happy, happy birthday, and again, thank you so much for being my lab partner multiple times. I really appreciate all of the support that you have shown uh, me and these videos, and I really hope that you're going to love this yarn. So again, Don Jans, thank you so much for being my lab partner. I believe I talked about the Dye Pot Weekly lab partner listings on Etsy a little bit earlier in this video. Uh, I can't always guarantee a date, but if you reach out to me with far enough in advance, I might be able to try to get your video close to a special date like a birthday. So feel free to message me on Etsy if you would like to chat about that. There are two different types of listings where you can become a lab partner in my Etsy shop. Dye Pot Weekly Lab Partner, you get to pick the yarn base, some colors for me to avoid, and then I will start filming a video with you in mind. Or you can become a last minute lab partner where you can pick from a list of videos that I've already started filming and you can see the yarn base and some color hints and technique hints of what I've put into the video. And then I will film some last minute shout outs for you to incorporate into that video. So in both cases, you get hand dyed yarn featured in an episode of Dye Cut Weekly, shout outs in the video itself. It's just the main difference is when I start the filming. Again, if there's any confusion about this, please feel free to reach out to me on Etsy. 
It is currently November when I am filming this, but I believe that this is probably my first video of 2022. So Happy New Year, everyone. I hope that your year is going off to a really nice start, and I hope that we all have a lot of wonderful things that happen this year, and I can say for certain that there's going to be a lot of exciting videos that come out here on the Kevin's Tutorials YouTube channel. Anyway, Happy New Year, and thank you so much for watching.